Rastalaman! Greetings YouTube, welcome to Zero AD Newbie Rush. I'm Jim Kogan. We are back again with some 4v4 action. It's uh, mainland medium temperate biome and we'll rip through the players here. First, starting with team one in the north and very familiar players, some of these. <laughs> We will start with Akazid. Now, Akazid we've seen recently, and the question of this game is going to be, is Akazid playing as the Carthaginians going to rip through the opponents with the Carthaginian mercenary cav? We've seen it a couple of times recently. Uh, I do not know how this game goes. Looks like Akazid is queuing up female citizens with auto train, but... In recent games, we've basically seen a very, very rapid switch to Phase 2 and the bringing out of the Mercenary Cav. So it'll be interesting to see if Akazid here in the light blue or Cyan goes for that again. Let's move on to see the other players. And in the green, playing as the Spartans, i got to try and pronounce this right, is it? Noferatius? Noferatius, that'll do. I'm going to mess that up. No Ferratius, playing as the Spartans, rating 1225. Just notice Akazid does not have a rating, but we know how good Akazid is. And uh, supported in the middle by No Ferratius. i got to say that a few times or I will definitely mess it up. No Ferratius in the green Spartans. Let's have a look further along. In the orange, another one I can't pronounce. I'm going for Gearing Gearing. Gearing Gearing. That'll do. Rating 1230 in the orange plane as the ghouls know nothing about them. Uh, the two middle players here I'm unfamiliar with, but we'll see how they get on or if there's anything left for them to kill after Akazid does his thing. I'm convinced he's going to go for it again with the mercenary cavalry, but let us see. Rounding out team one, Iberians on the other flank in the purple, RUL rating 1360. Never seen RUL play before. Uh, Iberians seem to be a very popular choice on the flanks and already we're seeing Cav from quite a few players. In fact, all of the players, uh, with the exception of Gearing Gearing, have gone for a bit of Cav. RUL certainly leading that in the game overall. Five Cav units, so expect some rushing. Let's quickly rip through Team 2 because I think they're about to be multiply rushed. <laughs> Let's have a look. So... Uh, how do you pronounce that one? Is that Belizard? Bee Lizard or Belizard? I'm going for Belizard. Rating of 1414. A tidy player also playing as Carthaginians facing off against Akazid's Carthaginians. So this will at least be interesting. Will be, uh, I'm going for Bee Lizard or Belizard. 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 We'll see if Belizard is any match with the Carthaginians against Akazid's Carthaginians. I've never seen them play before. Tidy rating in the 1400s. You always know you're going to get a reasonably decent player. Let us see. Moving along. Iberians again in the red. Sir Ivor. Now, that's SR Ivor. Maybe it's something different. I'll go for Sir Ivor. I don't care. 1360 in the red. Iberians know nothing about them. Uh, not going in for Cav, as most of Team 2 are not. Be interesting to see if Sir Ivor can uh, basically survive. Uh, it's an interesting position to be in. Decent rating in the 1300s. It's somebody in the 1300s is probably going to be able to defend some of the, the, the basics. I think sort of 1200 and below, you're looking at a newer or less experienced player, or like me, a not very good player. 1300, you have to have won a few decent games. So let's see. Moving along in the blue, Iberians again. It is Jago9, who we have seen before on the show a while back. I struggled to remember how well they did. Um, but rating of 1,378, also in that bracket there where they're a tidy player. Interesting to see Jag09 again and rounding out the teams in the pinky fuchsia colour, Hercule, rating of 1,488. Hercule submitted games recently. I'm hearing deaths. RUL is killing Hercule as we speak. There it is. It's a raid of nine nine cavalry come in and basically murdered all his women collecting berries. Her 
Kuhl caught on the blind side a bit there and things could get even worse. There are 18 women and only four infantry units in there. Hercule has to react. It is eight kills, nine kills to naught at the moment. RUL is putting it on Hercule quite heavily. And Belazard has decided to phase up. Is Belazard trying to do to Akazid what Akazid has been doing to players recently? I wonder if this is, because this is an older game, I wonder if this is what inspired Akazid to use this tactic. We will check this out as this raid is still going on. Hercule is in trouble here. He has been caught cold by this... Uh, by this cavalry rush it's 22 three kill 23 kills for the uh yeah for rul for only for the loss of three uh still got nine horses in there somewhere so is there something else going on that we aren't aware of i'm not seeing any other action anywhere else it's all happening here 25 kills uh look at this it looks like hercule has got some of his own cav out to uh to try and chase them away they're about to run into a fight where they're going to be outnumbered so this will be interesting hercule wisely withdraws not following through just looking to cover this up uh hercule is down to a population of 16. he's been largely cr uh crippled look at this akazid five minutes and six has also reached the town phase so we it's clear what's going on over there isn't it as uh, rul comes back in for another pass there's a load of women they just jump into a house one of them's bought it on the way through so her queue in massive trouble let's have a look at the other side a second we'll flick back while that raid is still ongoing it's trying to capture capture housing her queue not producing anything at the moment her queue is in in trouble uh, has he got any infantry? He's got no infantry. He's got six calves somewhere. Where are they? I'm not sure. But it looks like RUL has decided uh, that he's done enough damage and his withdrawal. He's, uh, Hercule has gone up to attack with his own cav. Has he got any extra kills? No, he's just destroying a barracks, trying to prevent a barracks from going up. This cav are going to come back in. So Hercule will try to take the pressure off. We're going to have a look over at uh, Belazard and Akazid because this is where this is where I think some stuff is going to happen. We're seeing a market going up. Are we seeing are we seeing the mercenary uh, training facility? Where uh, let's have a look. Not seeing it yet from Akazid. What are we seeing here from uh, Belazard? interesting so they're the only two that have reached phase two evidently this is part of the plan they're not interested in facing each other off as we see hercule is being chased away uh rul population of 53 hercule population of 18 he really needs to get those numbers back up is he producing at the moment it's producing women um in all manner of trouble and uh down to four horses and there are seven horses chasing them what stops rul going back in here and causing more havoc for her q has got zero infantry two infantry two infantry against the seven horses the seven horses are they deciding to give chase or are they uh i think they might be coming around for another pass or are they heading for home difficult to say let's have a look at populations while we're here uh i can't pronounce his name again Nuf, oh, I still can't pronounce it. Nuf, uh, I, I'm sure that's different to how I said it at the beginning. Uh, there they are, Nuferatius. Uh, going up to phase two, population of 90, clearly in the lead at the moment. A few players on 80. Hercule obviously bringing up the rear. The two players who phased up well early. Uh, oh, we have an attack. This is... Yeah. This is the aforementioned attack. It is... There is some heavy cavalry in there. So it looks like Akazid has tried to launch that early. There's more coming in now. This is what Akazid has been doing. It is the Iberian heavy cavalry mercenaries. In they come. And already Akazid is, uh, is causing havoc. He's got six kills for the last four. Uh... Belizard has not gone in for that uh, heavy calf presence and I think he's paying 
a heavy price for it. We've seen this so many times recently on Newbie Rush. Um, I am really surprised. What have we got here? We've got Heavy Cavalry of Belazar coming out now. So they should turn the tide on this. But uh, Akazid already has 14 kills to 7. They're leading them a merry dance. But at least it's a fair fight at this point. There's quite a lot of them. They are tough as anything, those, uh, those Heavy Cav. And I think... I think that might be enough to slow down Akazid. I think there's only one left there that's taken a bit of a pounding in the middle. Still some units in there, more coming in from Akazid. This is exactly what he's been doing. He's just been uh, just been flooding his enemies with, uh, with mercenary cav. They're retreating now, but more are coming in. So it's just a steady supply. Yes. But uh, yeah, this is interesting. Uh, Belazar is going after them. So it's a brave move. You can bet Akazid is producing tons of them as we speak. Yeah, they're coming out all the time. There's even a couple of horses from, uh, uh, from I can't pronounce his bloody name again. This guy in the green. No, Feratius. Yeah, a few of his. What are they? They are uh, ranged calves, so they're probably not going to be as effective. I think they're going to die horribly right here. Akazid looking to basically um, trap uh, Belizard in. There is, yeah, he's producing another nine himself. So steady waves being produced by uh, Akazid, whereas huge, great big numbers in one go being produced by Belizard. And we're looking at other movements elsewhere and expansions. Few other players have gone phase two. Uh, Nofratius is in phase two, Akas is in phase two, we know about. Uh, Belazar and Survivor, we've hardly looked at, who's sending small amounts of javelineers in to try and help. I don't think they're going to make a lot of difference, to be honest. Akazin's not having it all his own way, uh, but he has. He hasn't pulled ahead. Belazard is still keeping his population up. Uh, Sir Ivor was briefly, very briefly pop capped there. Uh, Sir Ivor's troops just skulking around at the back. Is Akazid going to change tactics here? Or is he still, there's still fighting going on. Yeah, there's still more coming in. So it's wave after wave of, uh, of this mercenary cavalry. Uh, Belzard has actually got more of them. There are 28 of them. They are currently hassling Akazid at the same time. So it's a question of who takes their eye off the ball the most. And uh, what's Belzard got there? He, yeah, he's run out of targets. Everything's hidden. And uh, Noferatius is sending quite a lot of infantry into support. And Akazid is still causing trouble down here. Who is up on population? Akazid is down on population. He is going to need that help. Uh, and it is Jago9, who we've not looked at since the start, who has gone into the lead population. Was just been taken over there by uh, Girin Girin. A few other players going for the town phase. Who's that? Jago9 has apparently reached the town phase. Uh, so everyone in phase one, apart from Hercule and RUL, who invo were involved in that big long skirmish at the beginning. It's kind of stopped, although the pile of corpses are still there. I think they've been duking it out most of the time. RUL has not had all of it himself. Hercule is getting back into it, but still massively, massively low population. A few players have got the uh, the vision, uh, the cartography uh view there. So Ivor has killed a couple of people for no losses. It's still Akazid who is trying to run run wild through there and support from Noferatius in the green. It's really kicking off over here. I don't think we're going to see anybody get to phase three at this rate. Bizarre. And it's a unilateral force for both sides that are, uh, that are fighting here. This is uh, incredible stuff. Which way is it swinging? I don't think Akazid is having this all his own way. He's actually dropped to the bottom of the population charts there. Still producing the cav. Still producing the ongoing attacks. Not seen anything from RUL since that initial uh, 
those initial sort of skirmishes with Cav over this side. And the guys in the middle have just pretty much been left to it down the bottom. So Ivor is sending his infantry in a bit. Try and cause Akazid more hassle. They're about to run into that Cav there. Maybe if they could take a few of them out. We're hearing a, uh, a mass genocide somewhere. So that's somebody approaching Potmax who's looking to go to phase three. Quite possibly. This is interesting. Akazid is not being allowed to get out of his own territory with his cav. So this is quite clever, uh, quite clever play from Team 2. They've recognised the danger. Team 1 now, though, are not just attacking with one unit. They are a team. And uh, Noferatius has supported well. He's sending... Although he's got 13 women in there. I don't quite know why. <laughs> Makes you wonder where are they? Are they now? Yeah, they're wandering back. I think they got caught up in the uh, caught up in the melee, so to speak. Neither of these teams is able to sort of develop the way that you normally would. They're just basically fighting, defending, and then counterattacking. Interesting. I reckon they could probably do. Oh, what we got here? Expansion, possibly from Jago Nine. It's a big group of infantry that are marching. There's one cav unit in there. You know, it's, it's uh, yeah, survivors cav unit following them and just checking where they're going. Uh, these are infantry javaneers by Jago 9. They're about to run into this big group of infantry here. This is 37 spearmen and eight javaneers of gear and gear in. I think they're gonna have a bit of a dust up. They seem to have just walked straight past each other. Hercule is gonna snow that's our ul's uh cab they're gonna run into this from the side uh in the meantime the shenanigans on the other side is still ongoing akasid still can't get his population above 50. uh belazard can't get his uh, population above 76. jag is at pot max but is involved in a bit of where he was at pot max he was leading rather he's involved in a bit of a brutal fight here and it's a bit of a stalemate, but RUL is sending infantry in, and this will swing it, and Hercule is sending a small amount of cav in. But I think... I think numbers are going to win this at the moment. It is very definitely Team 1 who've got the numbers in this area, as uh, RUL and whatever is left of uh, Gear and Gear in chase Hercule away. They're definitely going for an attack here. Uh, surprised they don't put a base down. This uh, this is still ongoing. Belazard looks like he's in a bit of trouble, as we're seeing Gearin, Gearin, and uh, Noferati is all about to phase up. Jago Nine and Sir Ivor have already phased up to, to the city phase, but I think Belazard possibly is running out of a bit of steam here. There's there's a bit too much coming in, but there is a lot of infantry there supporting him from Sir Ivor. So good move there. What we're seeing over here, we're seeing Akasid now attempting to hassle Sir Ivor. So is he just going around the flanks or is he literally going in to cause... Uh, yeah, he's not going to let him get away with this, he's going to capture his market. So Akasid changes tack, but at the same time... Well, don't stop at the moment. At the same time, Sir Ivor is attacking this small force of Akazid in Akazid's own base and this larger lot of infantry of uh, Noferatius. Uh, over here, Akazid is definitely getting a lot of kills on the periphery of Sir Ivor's base. And over here, it uh, looks like RUL and uh, whatever is left of Gear and Gear in have fallen back a bit after causing some trouble. Jag is going for a siege workshop right on the border with Hercule, so they're going to plan to attack through this side, I would imagine. Not seeing any expansions or bases. What are we hearing there? Has anybody got any siege? So, no, that was the catapult. I think that was a wall going up somewhere protective walls possibly or that might have been the sound when you actually finally build a uh, siege workshop not sure but interesting times where is it going to kick off next for once things are actually quiet in Belazard's base they're not so quiet over in uh, Akazid's base he's got his population above 50 we and we're still seeing Akazid causing uh, Sir Ivor all kinds of trouble down here, we're 15 minutes in, and rather a lot has happened, <laughs> as it has to be said. 
Who's in phase three and who's leading? Well, leading overall is Jago9, who is building a bit of a power base here in this wood line, looking to support Hercule as RUL is going to be a threat again. This is Blacksmith's going up right on the border. Gear and Gear has retreated a bit, but this is more barracks going up. He's not showing any signs of an expansion. Uh, Noferatius is falling back a little bit here. He's uh, supported, he's sending more troops in, but small dribs and drabs. Uh, this is just uh, a few hot plights, but they're being called back. Things have gone quiet. It's blood all over the border. It's absolutely crazy. Somebody's got siege. It's Gearin Gearin. What has he got? We're looking to see what he's got. I'm trying to find his siege workshop. It's a battering ram, a singular battering ram. Uh, could do with a few more of those. He's producing a couple more. Nobody else heading down the siege route at the moment. Huge concentration of troops here on the border for RUL. As the game starts to lag up a little bit as we get into the business end of things. This is uh, Hercule who's got 20, uh, 20 cav units. And over here we're seeing Sir Ivor going in again with a whole load of infantry. So spearmen and swordsmen. So they are all geared up to kill these mercenary calves that Akazid has been producing. Still, he's got his population up to 70, so he's getting there gradually. Gear and gear in at pot max and an enormous army rolling south. Supported a little bit, a few troops here from, uh, yeah, it looks like it's a, it's a kind of pincer movement. They're looking to surround this area here of uh, Jago 9. Jago 9 is about to be the meat in the sandwich and Hercule doing a little counter attack, but they're ignoring him. Are these ranged? Are these ranged cavalry? They are melee cavalry. If they could just see that, uh, just see that ram, they could take that down in seconds. But they're not. The ram is doing a sneaky torch. I think they've seen it now. Or are they going? Are they going to cross paths? There's more rams coming in. These are the units to get rid of the rams. They could possibly destroy the rams before they even get there. They're chasing the rams away. The rams are having to retreat. So they're having to do this fight without any siege. It looks like uh, Jag has been decimated in this corner. And Geary Geary is now retreating to try and get rid of this cav that are chasing his rams away. So another narrative goes on over this side. We are seeing Sir Ivor running into uh, another big infantry concentration from Nofaratius. We're still seeing Belazard sending the uh, mercenary cav in. We're still seeing Akazid sending his mercenary cam in down here. It's like you cannot, you cannot be, uh, you can't be safe anywhere. There's nowhere to be safe. And down at the bottom, uh, yeah, Akazid's uh, cavalry have got into the Iberian base, but he's being traced traced by uh, more mercenary cam from uh, from Belzid here. That's crazy. There's all sorts of crazy crap going on. Over this side, uh, this is the big push, I think. This uh, siege workshop has been captured by RUL. This is a disaster for Jago 9 and probably for Hercule, who's trying to, uh, to defend. But uh, Jago 9 has not really imposed himself on this area and they're in big trouble. I think this CC might be heading down if these rams get through. There goes the siege workshop that had been captured. Rams are coming in. Jag is sending small numbers of troops in. I don't think those are enough reinforcements. What's going to oppose the Rams at the moment? Not very much. I think Hercule is about to lose his CC. Three Rams coming in. There are a lot of troops there, but most of them, there's only a handful of 16 swordsmen. The most of them are, are skirmishers. I think they've seen off the rams. I'm quite impressed with that. They obviously had enough there to deal with the rams. So this attack is now faltering somewhat. RUL has to send his infantry south, uh, being pursued by everything. So Hukul has done quite well fighting that off. And all of a sudden, Jago 9 has quite a big army there as well. And uh, sort of normal service over here. Things go a bit quiet. There's, this is still going on. They're still tracing the last of those. 
we know while that's happening, um, RUL and Gear and Gearing will be prepared for the next phase of things. Huge concentration of uh, Noferatis' infantry has come in now. I think this could be something of a turning point. There is an effort to try and build walls across the CC. I'm afraid events have overtaken uh, Belazar there. And I think this could be trouble for him. He has uh, dropped in population. He's now lowest population just under 50. Akazid is in the ascendancy on this flank now, and it's uh, Noferatius who is uh, absolutely swinging it. The support from uh, Survivor, who has been, he's been there or thereabouts, but he's taken incredible losses. Uh, Belazard still uh, positive in terms of kill death ratio, but down to a population of 43 and somewhat being overrun at this point, but nobody else has gone in for siege. Uh, apparently, Nofratius has got a siege engine somewhere. Where is it? I'm not absolutely sure. There's a ram coming up now. This could be the thing that absolutely swings it in Teams 1 favour on this side. Over the other side, it's all gone a little bit quiet. They've had a bit of a stalemate there, and they're just rearming, regrouping. So this is where the action is. And at the moment, it's going to need... It's going to need Survivor to, uh, to send more troops up. He's down to a population of 56. I don't think they've got the numbers to fight this off. Uh, Akis is up to a population of 100. Uh, Noferatius is at pot max, pretty much. And there is Siege coming in. Unless there is uh, more of those Cav of uh, Belazar to come out. And it doesn't look like there is. They've got rid of the mercenary... Uh, uh, the mercenary producing building so that is big trouble for uh, for Belazard. I think they're going to go for a capture actually I think they're going to damage this CC to such an extent that all of these troops around combined can capture this uh, can capture this CC it's half destroyed as it stands they're all just laying into it there is uh, nine nine troops in it is that available for the capture? It looks like the ram has been destroyed. There are 15 cav units in it. I think they're just trying to batter it to death. That looks like what is going on here. We've had a resignation. We've had to either resign. So Belazard now absolutely. Why did he resign? He still had... Uh, he still had quite a population. I think he just felt he was completely out of his depth. He saw the writing on the wall over here. And Gear and Gear now coming through with a huge army. So Hercule is trying to attack. Uh, but he's being he's gonna be forced back by RUL. I think we have seen the end here. This is a match winning force that is gonna probably knock Hercule over. I don't think Jag's got anything to fight this off with. And over here. Belazard is going to see his base destroyed. There it goes. And he's down to a population of 30. And most of those, he's got some infantry. He's got a small number of cav. And he's resigned. So Belazard is gone. So he had the right tactic. He had the right tactic to, uh, tactic to counter Akazid. But it was not to be. So we are left with team two comprising only of Hercule, who is currently on the receiving end of this huge attack here. And Jag, who sent in one ram, but not enough infantry. This is, uh, this is a losing position. Uh, we are going to see Hercule resign soon, I think. I don't think he can fight this. And looking on the minimap, we can see that big combined force of Akazid and... Noferatius, they were coming in, and there is the end. Hercule and Jag threw the towel in. That was dramatic. Let's uh, let's have a look at how that went down. So, looking at the scores, now it's one of those where there there were some decent performances. I thought from from team two the, the scores don't possibly reflect it strangely jag09 who got the uh i think that's all economy he got the highest score on team two but probably was the least effective uh fighter interesting very interesting indeed i think that bit of experience of akazid and the support from uh Noferatius, i think 
won that flank over. Uh, Garen Garen and RUL never really looked in any trouble. Her Kewel is a decent player, but was uh, hamstrung by that early ferocity of that attack. He got caught cold there. So RUL pulled out uh, perhaps one of the early moves of the game to cripple that flank. And it was just a question of waiting until Gear and Gearing got strong enough to come down and fight them off. The one person that I think possibly could have held that flank with him is Jago9. Jago9 started expanding but did not really... I don't know whether he didn't upgrade his troops. We'll have a look at the kill-death ratios a second just to see who was effective. Jag09 was positive in the killing stakes. It's really Sir Ivor who... Uh, who, who was no good at killing other people, who lost nearly half of his troops, uh, or twice as many as he killed. So uh, interesting. Overall killing machine, it goes, funnily enough, it goes to the two guys on the opposite flanks. Hercule ended up with a 1.25 and Belazard with 1.25 as well. Uh, Noferatius, who uh, basically came a little bit to Akazid's aid and Akazid himself, ended up with the positive there and the two guys that absolutely forced the uh, the flank on the other side ended up with kind of negative kill death ratios but i think it's going to come to numbers to be honest were they yeah they were they were much better at producing the numbers overall team team one were able to to rearm and produce new new troops and replace troops a lot faster despite i'm just gonna check did they take they only took fractionally, uh, yeah, they got more kills and took fractionally less losses. I think that kind of underlines how close it was, really. Um, the scores overall make it look like it, it possibly was a bit of a walkover. It totally wasn't, I don't think. Um, let's have a look at the populations a second and see how they fluctuated. You see that huge dip there for Kewel. Uh That absolutely crippled him as a fighting force. He did get it back. But Akazid's population, we saw it sort of lolling down here at low numbers. It just goes to prove um, you don't need hundreds and hundreds of troops to remain uh, a fighting force. Did Akazid ever look in trouble? I think he would have looked in trouble if it had not been for... Nof uh, I still can't say his bloody name. Noferatius. <laughs> Worst thing is, I'm probably going to nominate him as player of the game. I think for... I think Akazid did brilliant. I was quite impressed with Belazard's uh, resistance in his counter-attacking. It's lovely to see somebody stand up to Akazid using that same tactic. It's something I've wanted to see for a while. But I think I'm going to have to go with uh, Noferatius for the way that he supported that flank. Gradually increasing the amount of troops that he was sending in there, supporting Akazid in his raids and helping defend when Belazard was raiding and when Sir Ivor was attempting to attack. Um, I think you had a, a, a clear example of Nef uh, Neferat, I still can't say his name, Neferatius getting it right and Sir Ivor not quite getting it right at all, which their ratings. I would have thought it'd been the other way around. But yeah, I'm going for uh, Noferatius as player of the game there. I think his efforts on that flank basically secured it and allowed Akazid to do his thing. And uh, the experience of Akazid definitely shone through. On the far side, credit has to be given to RUL for that early attack, which effectively took Hercule out of the game. Little bit disappointed with Jago9 and Survivor. They got the numbers, but they did not have uh, they did not have the strength when it came to the fighting. But so overall, congratulations to Team One. Um, pretty good victory. A lot of drama crammed into what is a relatively short game, and congratulations to uh, Noferatius for being player of the game and massive thanks to RUL for submitting that one he, he did say there was a, it kicks off around three minutes and it did um, coming in at just over 20 minutes uh, you expect uh, a 4v4 to be a walkover it was not there was a lot of drama a lot of tactics and I was well impressed with that enjoyed that one
good game. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave a comment, drop a like, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified of future episodes. If you'd like one of your matches featured on the show, see the video description of how you can submit your replays. And if you can't wait for the next episode, then why not check out these playlists in the end titles for more replays, commentary and tutorials on Zero AD Newbie Rush. I'll see you in the next video.